once again, I have lost my glasses. How can I do this? I know I'm going to have to speak to Jules. She, oh, look at that right there. Sorry, distracted. She has the little, um, you know, hangy things uh, in her shop. So I think I might have to look at that later or speak to her about that. Hmm. Yes, I keep putting them down. It's my screen ones. I've lost, I've got my other ones there. They usually, I usually keep them with, let's go and have a look. I usually keep them with my computer because obviously that's when I need them. Let's have a look. Uh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I came into the lounge from the kitchen. Let me flip you around. Right, so that's what I've been doing this morning. This is the pair that I knew were there. Oh, and there's the pair I lost. What is wrong with me? Do you know when you look but you don't see? Yeah. The dogs are rolling their eyes. <laughs> Hello, good morning. <laughs> oh. <coughs> What I was going to say was, uh, today I need to get my act together. I need to get my little tushy in gear. It's not little, but there you go. And do some stuff and feel better about doing stuff. So I've made myself a list in my bullet journal. First thing I have to do though, sadly, sorry, I'm distracted because the builders are back at work next door on the roof. So I can see out the corner of my eye, men, Walking up and down. <clears throat> I have to go and clear the garden up of the dog poop. <laughs> the way to say that. I'm not going to video that. I think probably best leave that. And then I'll come back and show you what is what. Morning, Hannah. Morning. <laughs> what you got? I'm very excited. Tell us what you got. I got your Mother's Day present. A Mother's Day present for moi? But not really, because Mother's Day is ages ago. Yeah, you missed you that, didn't you? Kind of knew about this anyway, but... Oh! oh. <laughs> Henry! Okay. Get. Show us what you bought me as a gift, because you love me. You a tea strainer. <laughs> so that I could get free delivery. Ah, oh, yes, that made all the difference, didn't it? Yeah. The difference between buying this and not buying it and paying for delivery was nothing. Cool, so, so we got... I get it for free. So that's a one cup. Perfect. Yeah. Or you can use the sexy tea bags. <gasps> oh, the colour on this film keeps changing. I don't know why. It must be your wonderful complexion that's throwing it's it out. It's black and glass. There's not Let a whole lot of colour. Let me zoom in. No, it's you that oh. keeps changing colour. Look at that. Look, you've got the pot. This is the one litre pot because ain't nobody got time for half a litre of tea. <coughs> and then you've got the filter and the press bit. Which is stainless steel. Yes. It's a plastic handle but a stainless steel filter. And once you get to the desired strength, you push it down to squish the tea in so it doesn't get any stronger. So it's like a coffee percolator, really. Essentially, yeah. And then it fits on the top. And you can see your tea. And you can see your tea. And then you just, you put, so you put the tea leaves in, then you fill it up with water, and then you wait for it to get to its desired strength, and then you plunge, plunge it, if you can actually get it to sit in there properly which apparently I can't. Oh, there we go. Wow. And then you plunge it. And that's a gift for me. Yeah. So that you can make more tea for me. Yeah. Thanks, Hed. <laughs> okay, as promised, a plant update. So, the really pretty purple oxalis, which is a cutting, is now flowering. So that was from Gainer. Uh, right, so I can't remember what this one was, but that's doing all right. That was from the, um, the plant shop in Richmond. You know, talking to yourself, first time. 
Thank you. This one was a cutting and I can't remember what it was, but look, I'm getting lots of new life there. This is my string of pearls, I think this is called. I think that needs a water, but that's doing well. So they're my little front door ones. I do move these around. That's what we've got at the moment. And then of course, that. He's not sure why I'm standing by the front door doing this, but she's going to be there anyway. So moving into the lounge, we've now got the mantelpiece plants. These all seem fairly happy here. So, <laughs> my little optimist. This one, again, I bought this from the Royal Horticultural Society. And as you can see, it's doing well, except... I've got to work out how to twist it around the frame a bit more. My prayer plant is doing well. We've got new leaves on that one. This little one, again, I think this was a, um, okay. Really? So I can't get near this now. Sorry if that made you dizzy. This little one, wasn't doing well until I moved it in here and I'm getting lots of new new life. Oh, and it looks like there's a little flower coming there. Again, can't remember what that is. And this is the second cuckoo oxalis. And then my trailing hearts, which is trailing and trailing and trailing. Look at that. It likes it there, definitely, for sure. And then, I won't bend you down again. I've got my maidenhair fern down there. And that seems happy. I cut that right back a little while ago. And it's really doing well now. Then up here we've got Gandalf, my air plant that I bought when I was with Penny and Irina over at Knit Night in St. Leonard's. That's a bizarre plant. And then here, we've got my rubber plant. And it looks like we're getting a new leaf just about to be born. I need to dust the leaves, but that's going great guns too. So that is all very nice, thank you. Crikey, I have been a busy bee this morning. I have ticked off one, two, three, four, five, five things off my to-do list. One of which included hoovering the stairs. But the good news is, um, beneath the Cretaceous, the Jurassic, the Triassic um, periods, there was carpet. And I'm working on the theory that all the dog hair and the dust on top of the carpet was protecting it. So I'm actually sustaining the lifespan of our stair carpet by not hoovering. Yeah. <laughs> hey, isn't it amazing what you can justify when you're rubbish? <laughs> anyway, I'm just about to have my lunch, but I wanted to show you progress. You know, I started my Juco Carol yesterday. Well, <coughs> pride cometh before I fall because when I sat down to do another round last night, and in fact, I sat down, we'd watched an episode of Death in Paradise. Gary went up to bed and I thought, oh, I've got to try and get another couple of rounds done so I could be really impressive on the vlog today and, you know, show people how quick I've done. And I went completely wrong. And it turns out I'd done the previous round completely wrong. So I had to rip the whole thing out and cast on again, which I did. And I've done a few rounds this morning with a high degree of humility, can I just say. And um, where is it? The thing is, my, it's not the best needles in the world. I'm on fixed circulars and I've got these needle guards that I just dug out on the end. 
thing is with brioche, it kind of looks like a mess until you've got a few things going, but you can see, it does look like a mess, doesn't it? But, so you've got the green and then, oh no, there's the green and there's the blue. Um, it does honestly, you see what bothers, what was bothering me are these kind of ladders in between. So those there and there, and then on the other side, you've got them in blue on the green. And I thought that wasn't right. But then when I looked at the picture, there they are in between. So I do think I'm doing it right. I just think it will take a few more rounds to have something that looks vaguely like a brioche cow. Plus, I might have twisted my work. Can you believe this? I didn't, I think I didn't join it twisted. I think I somehow twisted it with pulling it round. I don't, I don't know what I did. Anyway, after about two rounds, I realized my mistake. So because I was so close to the, um, the start of it, I was able just to flick it round literally one row and just, you, you can't see where, I wasn't gonna cast on again. I don't think you could get away with that with many patterns, but certainly with this you can. And it's totally not see not seeable, not visible now. So yeah, so that's the, the Duco cowl is coming along. I'll probably do a bit more of that this afternoon, but I'm also sorely tempted to cast on my um, Paloma sweater. So we'll see, I shall go and have my lunch now. And I've got one more main job, which is tidying up my craft room. Cause I'm running out of needles for my cast-ons. And that's ridiculous because I don't have that many projects on the needles. So I need to find where I put them on. And I will be back a bit later. Me your bully. Are you going to fetch it to me? in the kitchen so hopefully we might get a bit of uninterrupted 
book time. Uh, it's been a great day today, actually. I really, really had a kind of a, a new, a um, bit more of a motivation today. I wrote down what I wanted to achieve in my bullet journal. I started tracking my Weight Watchers, using my Weight Watchers app again, which, you know, is quite a big thing. I've managed to, I've been maintaining my weight, but I think probably the last couple of days I've been pushing it a bit. So I'm going back onto the app. So the little banana flapjack thingies that you saw I made are a Weight Watchers recipe. And they're really nice. It's just something to take the edge off rather than me hitting the chocolate. Although, having said that, we haven't really got much chocolate left now. So <laughs> when I did my last online order, I ordered some Ben and Jerry's light chocolate uh, ice cream. And of course, they substituted it with a chocolate caramel cookie dough. That was my undoing. That was really my undoing. So yeah, back on the wagon with that, which is good. And did a bit of baking, a bit of tidying, a bit of cleaning, a lot of knitting. The only thing I haven't done, I didn't tidy my craft room. And I haven't actually done my half an hour, do something for someone else today. So I might have to add that on to tomorrow's half hour. But other than that, oh, I planted the radishes outside. Jen rescued me she she sent me a text she obviously watched the um the vlog and she messaged me and said plant the radish radishes out the side so i've done that and given them a water obviously it's lovely I spent a bit of time out in the garden this afternoon with the hounds so that was good too it's probably why they're asleep so now i thought we'd do a little book a little book review as i mentioned um quite a few of you seemed quite keen on the old travel. Don't be misled by these two because I've actually also got <laughs> these here. Four of the same series. So I love travel biographies. Um, I like the slightly quirkier ones, um, slightly unusual ones. So not so much, uh, I don't know, it's a definite genre of its own, um, so I don't particularly like tales of, of real heavy hardship and woe, but I do like adventure. I'm going to say that. I don't know if you heard that. There's a pause outside the door. I'm hoping they'll go away again. Um, and also about starting a new you know a challenge in a foreign country that is my ultimate and the very first one that set me off it, there used to be a series on television about it and it was called no going back and so the first one i read and i got as a result of that show was that so it's by martin kirby and it's about well the little blurb not go, no Going Back, Journey to Mother's Garden is the inspirational true story of Martin Kirby and his family who left the English weather and rat race behind for a new life on an organic farm in northern Spain. Um, so, yeah, they basically sold up in this country and moved to northern Spain to try and make a go, uh, make a living on this organic farm. And I... Uh, I say absolutely love this and this is what got me really into this type of, of genre. Excuse me, I'm going to have to go and open the door. Glad. Okay, we're back. He's happy. Ish. Um, I'm going to get all my books all muddled now, Henderson. Put those up there. So, yes. You go to sleep, that's all right. I'm not impressed, are you? Yeah, No Going Back, Martin Kirby. Uh, again, this is the probably the oldest one. 2002, uh, this happened. So true story, obviously. It's um, an autobiography. I'm going to have to start rereading these, you know. So that's that one. The next one I found 
was this one called Driving Over Lemons by Chris Stewart. Quite by chance, found it browsing in the travel section of the bookshop. Um, and what made it interesting to me was that uh, this, this guy was the original drummer in the band Genesis. Lost out there, didn't he? Um, okay, what does it say? Uh, well, basically, he moved to a remote mountain farm in Andalusia, Andalusia, formed a friendship of a lifetime with his neighbour Domingo. They had a, uh, him and his wife had a, a baby girl there. They had a lemon farm. Um, and it's, yeah, it's his story, really, about this, this beaten down old farm they bought. Um, and again, really, really delightful. Enchanting, that's my word of the day, enchanting. His story about how they managed and how they made a home, a family home there. And then he wrote A Parrot in the Pepper Tree, which was a follow-up. Uh, so this is three years on from Driving Over Lemons. Uh, follows the lives of Chris, Anna and their daughter Chloe on their farm. Spanish school life, neighbours in love, journalists um, and various adventures. Then it goes on, there's four in this series. So if you like it, it's a good, a good one to get into. Then we have the Almond Blossom Appreciation Society, uh, which is, uh, his, their daughter is teenage, I believe, is a teenager. And then the very last one, which isn't that, it's not, that old actually this one I say that this could possibly age me um let me just see the year it was written 2014 so it's only what six years ago the last days of the bus club so yeah over the last however many years I've collected all four oh they're in the wrong order come with that um all by Chris Stewart love these books and again very tempted to reread them really really enjoyed those then we have oh let's go for something a bit different ah this one now this was a couple of years ago i bought it actually as soon as it came out just before the great big sort of i love everything danish um trend hit 2015 wow that's five years ago. Anyway, The Year of Living Danishly by Helen Russell. Really good, really easy read, this one. Um, yeah, it's basically, she was a journalist. Uh, she was an editor on a glossy magazine, decided that the commutes and the, the stress of working in London uh, was too much. She wanted to try for a baby. Um, basically, her husband was offered a job in Jutland, which is a very rural area of Denmark, um, and they moved over there. And it's her, uh, it's a funny, poignant record of a journey that shows us where the Danes get it right, where they get it wrong, and how we might all benefit from living a little more Danishly ourselves. Very, very, very accessible book. Very enjoyable, that one. So I then read a few more books about Denmark and then three years ago, we managed to go, we went to, to Copenhagen, visited Copenhagen. So that was good. Then we have, ah, which probably everybody will know, Wild by Cheryl Strayed. This was made into a movie, which I watched, uncomfortable watching, and it did change a little bit. So if you've seen the film, it's, well, it's a very gritty book, very gritty. There were some bits that made me very uncomfortable in it, particularly with reference to drug use. But it is... Um, 
a courage is a story of, of a woman's courage and of her um bettering herself and her life and apart from there were a couple of bits that i can that i skipped a page because it was to do with an animal and i can't read horrible animal things but the the rest of it um is amazing it is amazing this so quite a hard read but i did enjoy it i did thoroughly enjoy it um, you came away very, with a very positive message from it so that's a good one to so say the film i enjoyed but for a start it wasn't as raw as the book that's it is raw this book um and it was enjoyable as a standalone thing but i felt like they couldn't make it as raw and as gritty as the book as the real life story because it wouldn't have been very nice viewing only in regards to the issues she faced mentally and her sort of emotional baggage she was dealing with. But it's a good book. Okay, three more to go. This one now, oh my goodness, this was a little while ago I read this, so I just had to refresh myself. No Baggage by Clara Benson. And it's another autobiography. And basically, um, these two people who barely know each other decide to travel the world. Let's have a look. They, they barely know each other's last names when they agree to set out on a risky travel experiment spanning eight countries and three weeks. The catch, no hotel reservations, no plans, and best of all, no baggage. And they literally do that. And this is their story. And yeah, it's good. It's a good story. Um, a tale of love and wandering. You can kind of tell where that's going to go, can't you? But it's a very enjoyable story. And bearing in mind we're all having to stay at home, some of these might be quite entertaining. You can live vicariously through their adventures. Right, the last two then. For now, I have loads of these, but this will do for now. This one. I absolutely love Spain to Norway on a bike called Reggie. So it's uh, Andrew P. Sykes, yeah. And actually, he's done two more. Um, he's done Crossing Europe on a bike called Reggie and Along the Med on a bike called Reggie. And he's a teacher in Oxfordshire and he sets off to go from Tarifa in Spain to Nordcap in Norway. On his bike, so it's Europe's most southern point geographically to its northernmost point. It's a really entertaining read. Uh, it's written well, it's funny, um, it's interesting. Um, and yeah, I, I would really recommend that. Again, it's more about the people, all of these. It's about the people they meet and the places, you know, uh, the the kind of the stories they come across, uh, which is great. And then finally, the other one I chose, and again, I pulled this off the bookshelf. Um, this was, this was brilliant, this one. Extreme Sleeps, Adventures of a Wild Camper. So, and that's by Phoebe Smith. Sorry, you're getting a really nice view of Henry down there. Uh, I'll read you the little bit it says on the back. Veteran globe trotter Phoebe Smith sets out to prove that outdoor adventures are available in the UK, which rival anything found elsewhere in the world. In this sometimes scary, frequently funny and intriguing journey across the country, Phoebe attempts to discover and conquer its wildest places. So all set in the UK, this one. From spending the night in the decaying wreckage of a World War II bomber at Bleaklow, to pitching next to the adrenaline-inducing sheer drops of Lizard Point, Phoebe's extreme sleeps defy her perceptions of the great outdoors and teach her about herself along the way. So it's about basically sleeping in the wild all around um, Britain. Again, I really enjoyed that. Gosh, I've got quite a few of these upstairs. 
so yeah if this isn't enough for you i can do some more so they're all they're all good they're all fairly light with the exception of wild which is a bit gritty and a bit raw um i also have another one that is a little bit more serious uh called the salt path which is a newer one um but other than that all of these um Oh, wow. are really nice really nice reads if you like following other people's adventures and kind of just down to earth real life stuff so there you go that's a little bit to uh keep you going keep you interested you might be able to get some of them on audible i don't know if you prefer to listen um if you're interested in that kind of genre, and as I say, they're not really technical, scientific travel kind of stories. They are people based and, uh, you know, the spirit of adventure and looking at life slightly differently. I think maybe we could all do with some of that sometimes, couldn't we? So there is my book review for now. I might do another one next week. Right. And the confession. You'll see today's episode is episode 38, I believe. And of course, there's me thinking, right, last one is on Sunday. It's the last one, 40 days of Lent, right? No, we couldn't quite work out how come I would be finishing 40 days a week before Easter. And you know what? And hats off to you if you know this, I am a little bit over 50 years old and I still didn't know this, that Lent doesn't include the Sundays. So the 40 days of Lent doesn't include every Sunday of Lent. So that's why I'm about six days, five days out of sync because I've been obviously vlogging on the Sundays. So we will continue. We'll definitely continue until next Friday. And maybe a bit more than that. I don't know, because the whole, the whole, you know, lurgy bug thing has taken over. And with everybody at home, I know some of you, well, you've said on your messages that you enjoy having this particular brand of nonsense. I have books and book recommendations coming out of my ears. I've also got knitting stuff and crafting stuff coming out of my ears and ridiculous dog stuff foot, dog's foot. Oh, sorry, I picked I tried to cross his legs. So anyway, we'll see about that. See how you go. Look at the sun, it is so warm today. It's amazing. So I hope you've had a bit of sunshine wherever you are in the world. I know we've got uh, Q8 and we have got um, New Zealand and we've got the USA and we've got the UK. Um, if anybody's out there from somewhere else, or oh, Canada, don't forget Canada, give us a wave and a hi down there and say where you're watching this from so we can see just how widespread we are in our little vloggy corner of the world. So I'm now going to go and finish making dinner, which is homemade pizza tonight. Very acceptable too. And I will see you tomorrow. I have, oh, I have cast on, I've cast on the Paloma sweater. So I'm hoping just to get the, the turtleneck bit done. Right, so I may have that to show you. And you never know, my brioche cow might be a little bit less of a car crash <laughs> tomorrow as well. Anyway, have a lovely evening and I will see you on Saturday. <laughs>